Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, 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 His child and forever I am. Good morning everyone. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Before you presenting as Pastor Caleb Jackton, and this time I entitled my presentation The Experience of Salvation. How I pray by the end of this video, wherever you are watching it, wherever you listen to it, across the world, you will be blessed and we will be blessed. The experience of salvation. What is salvation? What is our standing to the word salvation? Salvation simply means deliverance from sin and its consequences and this is brought about by faith in Christ. Salvation simply means deliverance out of sin and its consequences and this is brought about by faith in Jesus Christ that is salvation if God was the creator he created everything perfect from the very beginning of the world man was a perfect creature the world was a perfect world without sin and what happened Therefore, today, we speak of salvation. Remember, God having created the human nature in the perfect way, he took them in the Garden of Eden. Dear viewer, dear listener, I want to make you understand that the infinite, the infinite God was always seeking the best for the man, the best for the humankind, but the adversary, that is, Satan was always seeking for the fall of man. Therefore, in the Garden of Eden, we see the first human parents, that is, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden, being influenced, being corrupt by the adversary, therefore they all went against the will of the Lord. But God, being a loving God, the love is his nature. He actually accepted to give his own Christ to die for me. Christ to die for you. Christ to die for us. Remember in the book of John, it is well indicated that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in the son of God shall not perish. Whoever believes in the son of God shall not die. But him or she shall have eternal life. What does this mean? It means that being that we heard, being that we sinned, being that we went against the will of God, the consequence, the outcome, the result of our disobedience was to die. But God, being a loving God, he gave his son. Now, us believing in Christ, us believing in Jesus, we have eternal life instead of perishing, instead of having feeling or instead of receiving the penalty of our sin instead of receiving of all that was the result of sin that occurred in the garden of eden then today when we believe in christ we live forever the experience of salvation and here 
I want to tell you that the experience of salvation, it is something that is continuous. Salvation does not come once. It is a process that actually began in the past. It is there in present day. Then it will be there in future. And that is why I like what Apostle Paul said in the book of in the book of Ephesians. Paul, the apostle of Christ, he said to us, Paul said to us, in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 27, Paul said, Christ loved the church and he gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot of wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish amen then he continued to say still paul speaking to us in the second corinthians chapter 4 verse 16 Though our out nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed every day. Christ is renewing us once again. Christ is here to make us new. Even though we are hard, but he make us new by believing by his blood that was shed on Calvary, then we are made new again. Dear viewer, the experience of salvation involve some of the following things the five major things in the experience of salvation there is repentance this is where one actually proclaim or one admit that he is a sinner he says that he is a sinner and he accept christ in his life he live or he repent he said by believing in christ so that the sins may be forgiven. Number two, there is what is known as confession. You actually say by your mouth, you actually say by believing in the inner heart, you speak it out by the word of mouth. You confess to Christ so that your sin can be forgiven. Forgiveness, once you have repented, once you have confessed, then Christ is willing to forgive about all that you have. Justification and sanctification. When I speak of justification, it is only done by faith in Christ. It is much different from all other steps. But justification is done by Christ. You believing in him, me believing in him, then we are justified by faith. The experience of salvation, there are for changes from place to place. There are changes that take place in their daily lives. Through Christ's blood, through Christ's blood, being, bringing purification, justification, and sanctification. The believer is a new creator for the old things has passed away and all things has, has become new. That is what now Apostle Paul tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 that the old is gone, the new has come. Which is gone? The old, the sinful nature that we erred, it is now gone and now we are made in you again, in Christ again. Salvation includes living a sanctified life on the basis of what Christ accomplished at Calvary. And for believers to experience salvation, God gives them the spirit of holiness. In the book of Romans, chapter 4 verse chapter Romans chapter 1 verse 4 in the book of Romans 
chapter 1 verse 4 God gives the spirit of holiness the spirit of the spirit filled believers do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit through the indwelling of the spirit of God they are not in the flesh but in the spirit wonderful that once God has given us the spirit of holiness we are made new and now we do not walk to the desires of the flesh but we walk according to the desires of the spirit of God hmm. and then our lives must be transformed both internally and externally and dear viewer whom do you think can do transformation of our lives the one who does about the transformation of the human nature is only Christ himself for one to have full salvation one must involve Christ and the Holy Spirit wonderful for the soul for the full salvation to take place in our lives Christ our Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit should be involved in our lives whereby Christ will renew us Christ will make us new by restoring our minds our sinful nature both inside and outside and what is the role of the Holy Spirit the spirit of the Lord will now therefore lead you lead me and make me walk in the ways of the law and when we believe in Christ then we shall not surely perish and we shall not surely die only the creator can accomplish the creative work of transforming our lives but he was not he was to do so without our participation okay even though it is only Christ who can do the work of transformation in our lives but without your participation towards it then it is in vain then we have to actually channel our spirit both mentally physically and spiritually to the working god to the wonder working god in transforming our lives how are you you are blessed continue watching us to the end may god bless you all Wherever i am i know i shall see in his beauty the king in whose law i delight who loving me guardeth my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night redeemed 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 by the blood of the lamb redeemed redeemed his child and forever i am